elephants and coffee in Namibia. What is life right now? Hey, we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep the vibes going. Thank you for being here. Thank you for still watching. I do still miss home, I will say. Like, I think, I think what it is is the moment that I get into a hotel room by myself, I feel a little bit homesick. But once I'm out and about during the day, I feel fine. So the moments where I'm at lodges and I don't really have much to do. So like, I felt that way at Zanier, um, Zanier Sunup, where like mainly the thing to do was to just like horseback ride in the morning and then like maybe go on a sundown drive, but there really wasn't much to do there. And that is what had me feeling a little bit homesick. But doing the hot air balloon ride this morning and then going to Deadvlay today, like I felt really good. I was interacting with people, da 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 da. So I think it's very valid to not, to feel loneliness when you're alone. Um, but I wouldn't say I feel that way on like the full extent of my solo trip because like when I'm not in my hotel room, I'm pretty much being social. Um, and of course I always have like a guide with me and things like that. So just reflecting on progress and how my feelings have changed or stayed the same throughout this trip. Um, we still have a week left, which is crazy to me. Or I don't know if, we, is it, if it's that we have a week left or I leave in a week. I think it's that I leave in a week. So let me see. I leave in a week. So I have six days left, which feels a little bit less daunting because it feels like I've been here forever, but it's because I left home six days ago. So this time last week I was packing. So again, I don't know if I've said this, but this is the longest trip that I've taken ever. I don't even think Nigeria and Ghana was two, was up to two weeks. I think I did six days in Ghana and like seven days in Nigeria. So maybe. I almost forgot to do a quick little room tour. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. Very, very simple, very straightforward, still very cute vibes. This is the Swakopon Sands Hotel. And I think it gets the job done. Yeah, so this is the bed, the bed area. Let me see if there's any, there's not really any view. I don't know if you can see, but these don't even really move because, oh, it's frosted. Okay, so it doesn't even matter. We come here. And this is the mirror area and the sink. And then this is the shower. And this is a little coffee bar area, place to put your luggage. And then this is the toilet. So pretty simple. It is what it is. But again, I don't feel like there are bugs in here. I don't feel like I'm in the middle of the desert and like fending for myself. So yeah, I'm, I feel good. <laughs> Oh, I just got back from dinner and we need to have a talk. Um, so I didn't really think too much of it, but he like brought it up twice today because it has happened twice today where like people are trying to place me um, and they're trying to place me because like I am a black woman in Namibia, but like they're like thinking like, but I don't think like they don't really see people like me or who look like me or who are in my like people are he really was just like people are trying to place you like is this a Namibian is this not a Namibian like is this like what's going on here and I think that is so fascinating to me so the context he brought it up with this morning morning when I went on the hot air balloon ride um I was in a compartment with like a few other Australian people um and they all had like super fancy whatever like cameras and we didn't really start talking until I pulled out my DJI Osmo this camera that I'm filming on right now and that was when he was like oh that's a DJI Osmo and I was like yeah and then that was when he was like where are you from like did it and that was when the conversation started to happen and I thought that was interesting because I'm just like you know you know maybe that's a, I, I guess the camera signified to him like oh this is a person who has a camera that like oh you 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 got something like whatever um so after we did the hot air balloon blah 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 yada 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 um i went to change into that dress that i wore to deadly and or deadly and when i got out that was when i was i signaled to my um guy that i was ready to go 
but I noticed that he was talking to, to the Australian guys who were on the thing with me. Um, and then, oh, I, I should mention or backtrack or mention that we had gotten to talking with the Australian guys and I mentioned that like, I'm an influencer, blah, blah, blah. Cause they were like, do you normally travel by yourself? Like, da, 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 da. and I was just like, no, well, I mean, I, I was like, I do travel by myself more often because I work for myself full time as an influencer, da, 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 whatever. Um, and so after, when I was done getting dressed, um, I noticed that my guide and the Australian guys were talking and then um, after they were done, after I signaled that I was ready to go, the Australian guy came to me and was like, hey, like, what's your Instagram actually? Like, da 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 like, I'm gonna follow you. And I was just like, yeah, sure, like, whatever. Once I get in the car with my guy, he was like, he was like walking, he was like, being with you gets me a lot of attention. Like, he was like, I like traveling with you. It gets me a lot of attention, like, jokingly. Um, and I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, those Australian guys were like, what's going on here? Like, they were just trying to place me, like trying to figure out what was actually happening. And he was like, oh, I'm the guy. And they were like, oh, like, okay. And then that was when they were like, okay, let's, you know, ask for her Instagram, da 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 da, da. So that's the piece that like could be uncomfortable. Like the piece where like people think that I'm like probably with this guy and I'm not, but like, I don't really care because we're also working on not really caring what people think. And like, I don't care, but that's just to say, if you are thinking about traveling solo to Namibia and like you are a black woman traveling with like a black Namibian guy, like, people are probably going to be confused or think that you're together or just be confused by you. Same thing also happened at dinner. We went to Tug and like as soon as I walk in, like people are like, what's going on here? Also, I would say that the demographic of Tug, like the people who were there get dining completely white. That was like 99% white people. I saw maybe one couple that was black and then any other black person I saw, I think was a guy. So anyone who's dining at that place outside of me and two other customers were black. And I want to say that there were maybe about 100 customers in the restaurant, maybe like 75 to 100. Like it was a pretty big restaurant. Um, and then when my guide sat down at the table and after some time, he was like kind of chuckling to himself. And I was like, what's funny? And he was like, there were two men who were sitting at that table and they kept looking over at you, kept looking over at you. And they looked like they had like a confused look on their face or like a whatever. Um, and he was like, I think they were just trying to place you They're They're like, who is this girl? Where is she from? I, uh, the like result is still the same, which is like, people are staring at me, trying to figure out what I'm doing here, trying to figure out how to place me, all of that type of stuff. And I think that's just a very interesting experience, but the common theme amongst both of them is that it's white people doing it. Well, actually some black people are trying to place me and figure out like some people in the Namibia are trying to figure it out and like once they hear me speak that's when they're like oh okay so she's not from here blah 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 but I think that is very interesting to process and so I just wanted to share that with you as I got back from dinner but I'm gonna get ready for bed and I'm probably gonna call my mom edit some TikToks and then watch Netflix. Males look very similar However, instead of orange, the males have a bright yellow color. A sexy hairstyle as well. The sexy hairstyle is also for breeding. You come back in two months, she will lose her sexy hair. Oh the color my, the what is going on here? Actually, you mind keeping the back of my head by the end? I love you more, Alright, so, game first seal, Pelicans will continue. Sadly, with the seal here, I cannot give anything to the Pelican. He will not enjoy that. And as you can see already, he's a bit uh, angsty. He is not in the business of sharing. Dyes, same sexy hairstyle, yellow, not orange. So you know this is a male. When the breeding is done though, it becomes a bit more difficult. Because then they're both very similar. The colours are... <laughs> the colours are identical when there are no breeding seasons. Sorry my friend, I'll be there a second. Now these pelicans can stay as long as they want, even if there's no food, I don't mind. The seal, unfortunately not.
Hi friends. I don't even think I've said hi today, but um, this morning I did, I'm very tired and I'm, the reason I'm tired is because it's very cold. It's very, very cold. It's like 50s and I wasn't mentally prepared for that. The outfit that I have on is more so like as if I were gonna be in the desert and this is like cold desert, <laughs> like cold all day. Um, this morning from the footage that you saw, I did a, a catamaran and we spotted dolphins and whales and seals and it was cool. Um, and now I'm doing the sandwich harbor thing. Um, but we stopped to see these flamingos that are here, which are cool. We can't really interact with them, so it's just like seeing them, getting some footage, some pictures, and then keeping it pushing. So, yeah, but we'll check in. We'll debrief later. You know I don't be talking outside of the home because I'm by myself and I don't want to draw attention to myself. But, yeah, okay. Guys, I'm so tired. We're on this sandwich, sandwich harbor dune tour, but... I didn't realize it's like a full tour so like we've been stopping along the way and it's like 55 kilometers to get there and 55 kilometers to get back and we've been stopping and I'm just like no I'm okay like I don't how many pictures do I want to take like I don't I appreciate it but I'm just like one of those people that's like no like how many pictures of the scenery do I want to take like okay like it's pretty cool let's keep pushing but yeah, we're here. Okay, just keep it like up, open this. Mm -hmm. If you see a lion in the bush, mm -hmm. this will happen. Wait, this is not. Ah, this mm. is not working. Maybe it's too much. Wait, wait, wait. The things out. Maybe it's too much iron on the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I struggle. Where are you? Maybe like this. Ah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah. Yeah. See, this mm. is what happens. Your, ha your hair will stand up, huh? Mm -hmm. You see a lion. <laughs> Huh? It was cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> I spoke too soon. That was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. Nature. The elements. They're all around us. It's a guano. It's a bird droppings no? for fertilizer. Huh. Yo! Yeah. You get stuck, my friend. Why? Because there's no track there? No. <laughs> Maybe it was too slow. Oh. Good morning, friends. I am dressed. I just had breakfast with my guide, Leslie. And it's time for us to leave Swakopmund. So, Swakopmund. <laughs> I'm, I still haven't gotten that right, um, but I slept well. I am energized. Probably going to do a little bit of reading on the road, but I'm good to go. Um, I'm good to go, and we are off to Damarland, which is going to be, he says, about a four-hour drive. So we get there when we get there. Let's go. 12.30, we've made it to the pickup point for Unduly Ridge, but we're waiting to see for someone to pick us up, but it's 12.33, so that took us about three and a half hours. I see some animals in the distance, and I'm trying to figure out what those are. They don't look like orcs. Not me dropping my phone. Not me dropping my phone. Well, otherwise, we're back in the warmth. Praise the Lord God Almighty. But yeah, I don't know what those are. What are those? It's about 20 minutes out. They're about 20 minutes out to pick us up. So that's good to know. That is very good to know. Hello friends, we had gotten picked up by um, 
the like shuttle to take us to the lodge and it's like a 20 minute drive but i'm not in the shuttle right now because one of the flat tires uh we have a flat tire basically so they have to stop and change the tire which is what they're doing right now i'm about to put on some bug spray i'm not gonna lie because these bugs out here are doing something but yeah Again, again, it's above my pay grade. Welcome to Unduli Ridge. Very spacious room. We have our robes over here on this side. We have really spacious like hanger, clothing rack, yoga mat, like yoga stuff down here. Let me actually just do that. Um, we walk around here. I think I actually want to show you the room first. So this is the room. Um, stunning. It's stunning. Very beautiful view. Um, very beautiful vibes. This is the bed. Um, there is a beanbag chair over there, which I love. This bed, I don't know if you can see, but there are wheels on the bottom, so it is possible to roll it out onto here and have like a star bed um to stargaze so we love that um stunning stunning and then i'm going to show you the bathroom the mini fridge is well stocked everything here sensational beautiful we love it phone and wi-fi instructions are right there um sensational and then this is the bathroom it's got like an outdoor concept shower it's stunning it's honestly very 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 stunning like this might be if their wi-fi is good this might be my favorite one of this trip so yeah good morning I watched the most beautiful sunrise from my uh, bathroom. <laughs> and now I am rushing to get a little quick bite to eat for breakfast. I was a little late because I was filming content. What's new? Um, but I'm ready to go and I'm excited to see some elephants today. I love elephants. Like they're so, cr it's just such a crazy combo to me. But as you can see, I'm like rushing. So. We'll talk when we're on the road. Slept. <laughs> All right, guys, so these are elephant tracks. So that means we are getting closer, or at least in the vicinity of where they are. They shouldn't move too far along. Okay. So we'll try to catch up with them. And then at the same time, I also saw some giraffe tracks. They are oh. all going down. Oh, wow. So I'll just keep an eye out for both sure. of them at the same okay. time. Yeah. What, are, what do giraffe tracks look like? Will you show I'll us show it when to you. you see? Yeah. yeah, like two giant hooves together. Oh, okay. I s did we see some when we stopped last are you time probably, to see yeah. the uh, yeah. elephant tracks? Yeah. A few minutes ago, I saw some. They were some. together, yeah. yeah. two hooves like this. Like. Okay, we have to continue to follow this. quick update so we had lost the elephant tracks before um, and our guide backtracked a bit and found some and now we're like right on top of them um, so we're trying to follow them yeah I fully see them and he thinks they're down by the water so this is just really what goes in
into it, if you've never been on a game drive before and you're thinking you just drive in and see animals, no, that would be a zoo. We have to actually look for them and it takes a little bit of time, but we'll get to them. are fresher the smell is stronger <laughs> so yeah I guess we're really using all of our senses to find where these elephants are which is fun hey guys so we paused to have coffee our guide is really amazing and he found a nice little like ledge perched up by the river it's not a river it's completely dried up <laughs> but um we're here and they're literally the elephants are like right across from there as we have coffee so we like are being very careful and like making sure that we're all close together so it doesn't feel threatened and feel like there are a lot of like humans here but elephants and coffee in namibia what is life right now it's really hard to see but they are right there behind that tree and down that way so we are going to find out why we gave it the name the lion and zoo okay stay tuned hey guys so on the way well, we're actually hiking up. I actually don't know. We're on the Lion Man's path, I think it's called. Um, but I just wanted to check in from here because I probably will forget to tell you. But if you ever do this, it is like a bit of a hike. You know, it's a little something. I'll show you guys in a second. But as you can see, I'm breathing heavy. So just, just a warning. Wear proper attire and shoes and bring some water. Some people consider their sacred place, mm. holy place, yeah? They were nomadic hunters and gatherers, meaning they moved from place to place in search of animals to hunt water holes, but would always come back here because this is where their rituals and ceremonies were always being held. Yeah? So the Bushmen, some people, were the people that made the engravings. They are estimated to be around about 2,000 to 6,000 years old, yeah? What, so, what was the reason why they considered this place to be important? Thirsty, spring, water. Water. The type of one thing. The type of fish. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was enough water. Mm -hmm. Enough water, yeah. Two to six thousand years ago. Yeah. Obviously, climate yeah. was totally different yeah. from now. Yeah. 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 So that could be the reason. Okay. Yeah. Any All other, right. Any other reason? Uh, I think that's basically it. Okay. All right, so they used quadstones um, and basalt, rock, very hard uh, rock, on softer rock. So all those rocks uh, that you see around, sandstones. So that's how they made the engravings. Yeah, this was done to form of communicate amongst their groups. And also sort of a school, blackboard for their younger generation. Mm. Yeah, so different animals that they saw, their ritual beliefs, yeah, they all did it on the rocks. So right here, yeah. Oh, most oh. famous one. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought the only two ones. Wow. Yeah. First one, the most. Uh, oh, the lights are on the wrong way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the most famous one of the Trey Fontaine, the Lion Man. Uh, Lion Man. Remember when we came in, the root, the Lion Man root. So if you look at the lion over there, at the end of the tail, going up, human hand. Yeah. Do you see the human hand? The lion at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh if yeah. If you look at yeah. the lion at the tail, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Up, a human oh. hand. Mm -hmm. okay. And down the feet also five. Yeah. Yeah. So in the group of the bushmen, there was a man called a shaman, medicine man. Mm. So during their ritual ceremonies, he would always go into trance, spirit world. Mm. So once he was in trance, he saw himself transforming into different animals. In this case, the lion, king of the jungle. Yeah. If you look at the lion's mouth, small antelope in the mouth. Mm -hmm. 
he had hunted mm. successfully. Mm. Like I said, the bushmen only live by hunting. So the reason the shaman went into trance, this was to communicate to their ancestors, to the spirit world, to provide them with successful hunting, power to heal the sick, and also to make rain. So not physically did he transform into a half human, half lion, but spiritually. Yeah. So once he came back, he always shared uh, the experience. So they believed in animal spirit. They believed once you die, you come back, reincarnation into a form of an animal. We put the soft one below and work the hard one. We are rolling. But before you roll, you take a little bit of sand, then you put inside the hole, then you are rolling. So while we are rolling, if the friction takes place, the cow will fall out of this hole, on top of this metal. Then you transfer to the grasses, then you blow it. So while we are rolling, we are also talking with the fire. Go, 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 and go! That means burn fire back. Always you talk with the fire. And in the past, it was a big test for a young man. If he is ready to get a wife, he must know how to hunt and how to make the fire. No hunting, no fire, no wife. <laughs> and opening them up so I've been hearing bro I haven't even brushed my teeth I haven't even done anything yet bro I've been breaking out and I think it's just this air is just so dry that like my skin is like what are you doing here sis it's so dry it's so extreme cold in the mornings and evenings hot in the day like what's going on sis what are you doing to us why are you putting us through shock therapy um, but I've been hearing birds chirping. I'm, this is why I picked up this camera to vlog first thing. I've been hearing birds chirping. And then I've been hearing things getting knocked over in the bathroom. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think with this open concept bathroom, there are birds in the bathroom. And I'm such a wuss when it comes to things. But let me tell you something. I don't even know why I am. Because birds are actually like not aggressive at all. So like, I'm sure if I go in there, 
I could just shoo them away. But like, I don't like having to interact with nature like that. So I've just been like banging on the walls of my bathroom, hoping, hoping that that startles them and that they fly away. Because like, why? Okay, it's quiet now. Oh my gosh. Oh, I actually don't think they came here. <laughs> I don't think they came here at all. So that was for nothing. Yeah, nothing has moved. There is a sunrise. There is a sunrise. <laughs> How beautiful. I'm gonna have some things to work on. <laughs> like I'm gonna have to go get a hydrofacial as soon as I touch down. I have a hair appointment the day that I the day after I get back, but like there's a new sp never mind. <laughs> I was about to say there's new something by my home, but I realized like I'm actually I'm not about to tell people. I did I don't know if I mentioned the story about the guy who um knew where I was and was about to pop up to the hotel that I was staying at but thankfully I don't post in real time so I'm I wasn't even there um but it's made me rethink how I share online um and it's kind of unfortunate because I'm like dang should I stop posting like my gym content like should I stop posting like me working out in the gym and just like, cause I, some people have been able to figure out where I live, not on a creepy way, but in a, they also live in the building type of thing. So for example, somebody who lives in my building came up to me and was like, oh, like my cousin follows you on Instagram. She like noticed the gym that I was in and noticed the gym that you were in and was like, I think, and told her cousin, like, I think you guys live in the same building and then like sent me your page and like da 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 So not a creepy thing at all. And like very much so like, this was somebody that I had seen in the gym often before, but they just didn't know who I am because they're a man who's not in my target audience, blah, 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 blah. But it's just making me think like the way people are going off in the comments, they're like, and I even know this, like when I post my sunrise views on Instagram, I'm like, I'm technically posting my view, but like, eh, would people really be able to figure out da, da 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 And now like, I'm just like, dang, like, I feel like a lot of my content was based on like the sunrise and my gym and things that like you could figure out where I am and where I live. I haven't had any incidents. I feel completely safe, but I'm just like, oh, like as I'm growing, like, and as my audience is not being something that I can easily control, I'm like do should i really stop all of those things um and it's unfortunate because i'm just like dang there's such a huge part of my content like the sunrise like what i do in the gym like all that stuff is really huge and i'm very intentional about the gym because my gym has windows but i always make sure that you cannot see the view from the windows so i do take precautions like that but now i'm like do i have to just cut it out altogether and just do like checkout videos i don't know personally have always felt like you know God's protection has been over me and all that stuff, but there's also like a level of being smart that you have to have. And so, yeah, ever since the incident where the guy was gonna show up at the hotel, I um, blocked him, but I also just stopped posting vlogs on TikTok and stopped sharing what location, like even sharing videos of the hotel. I'm like, I'm not, I'm gonna do a hotel recap once I get back home. Activities I'll share, but I'm not sharing the hotels, even if I don't mention what hotel it is, because I'm sure local people can figure out what hotel it is. Even though like, for me, it seems like such a hard thing to do. It's because I'm not from here. That being said, well, I definitely feel like there were birds here because there's poop, but none of this bird poop is fresh. Nope, that's fresh. That's definitely fresh. Yeah, so the birds, the birds were here. The birds were indeed here chilling on the rock. Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't crazy. Um, I'm very happy. This is like the first morning in a while where it's not crazy cold. Like, I love that. At any rate, 
at any rate, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I was talking about how my relationship with what I post online is going to have to change, especially as I grow. Oh, and especially as my audience becomes people that I don't necessarily want. How do I say this? Okay, I'm going to give you the context. So a couple of maybe like last week or the week before, Pulse Nigeria 247, which like... I'm not even really familiar with the page, but when I checked the page, they seemed like a, like basically like shade room type page, but like for Nigeria. So like a Nigeria gossip or blog page, they have like maybe 2 million followers. I don't know what the exact number is now because I, I have since blocked them. Um, but they posted my Ashake concert video. Like they took the video off of TikTok and posted it on their IG page and I know they took it off of TikTok because they put the exact same text that I had on my TikTok video about like the only way to sing Lonely at the Top at an Ashake concert. They covered it and put their own text on it. Um, and I think, and the thing that frustrated me about that is I specifically have saves on my TikTok, like downloads off. You can save the video, but you can't download any of my videos. And that's because like, again, like last year at some point, like people were taking my videos and posting them on their like repost pages, on their gossip pages, on their whatever. And I felt very like uncomfortable with that because the type of content that I post on TikTok is different than the type of content that I post on Instagram. I feel like the way people act on Instagram is different than how they act on TikTok. So I'm comfortable being more vulnerable on TikTok, all those things, but I'm not really comfortable um, posting that type of content on Instagram. Um, and so when pages would just take it and bring it to that side of the internet, it annoyed me. And so I was just like, I don't want people to be able to take my videos and post them without my permission and download them and just whatever. Obviously that doesn't stop people because uh, there are platforms where you can download videos. And then on top of that, like you can screen record and remove the watermark and all of that type of stuff. So I know it's not a like sure, sure tell way to keep my videos off of people's pages, but sometimes I'm like, okay, well maybe this added barrier would make people think before they take my videos. Anyways, Pulse Nigeria took my video, they posted it on their page, and for some reason, like I'm like, all the other videos are just like not really performing, but for some reason my video went viral and is going viral because people are still sending me this video. And I blocked them after I took a look at the comments. Like, and it's just like, you know, a potentially Nigerian audience, but mainly Nigerian male audience, I would say was in that comments. And like, I saw a comment that was like, oh, is this woman trans? Like, oh, da, da, da. Just like stuff that is just like absolutely ridiculous um, that like are just like Nigerian men just like being annoying people. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna block this page because again, I don't want my stuff on your page. So I'm blocking you on TikTok, I'm blocking you on Instagram. Like, sure, maybe an individual worker who has an individual account can still access my content and like post. But like, again, creating that added barrier of like, no, like, you don't have access to my page. I don't, because I don't, I didn't ask for you to put me on your page. And now I'm being exposed to an audience that like, some people are, you know, nice and whatever, but then some people are volatile and some people are just rude and mean because that's what they do all day on the internet. And I'm protecting my peace and protecting boundaries um, and maintaining boundaries rather. Um, but then on top of that, I've been getting more like male followers, like more male Nigerian followers that are like, oh, I saw your video, you're beautiful. Like, did it. And I'm just like, I don't want you here. This content is not for you. I don't want you in my DMs. I don't want you here. And this video being posted online has like exposed me to an audience of men that like I don't seek. <laughs> so that's what I mean. So that's the context. Like that's an example of like a situation where I'm like, yeah, like now I'm getting exposed to different demographics, different audiences that like I don't necessarily want and for that reason like that is also an added layer of being mindful of posting things that could lead that could reveal sensitive information about myself this is an early morning ramble i don't know what time it is but it's probably time for me to shower and get up out of here i might have to film quickly a sponsored video <clears throat> before i go which i really 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 resent i feel like this has been the first like true vacation of the year um montenegro was close but like in montenegro like I did a lot of work. Sorry, my ear is just feeling a little like pressurized. I did a lot of work in Montenegro and this was the first trip where I was like, if the brand didn't, I tried to reach out to the brand and tell them that I was leaving. I tried to film all the content before I left. Um, if the brand, sorry, I also have like acne <laughs> spots or like not spots, but like I put acne, Tula acne 
whatever on my face. So you're just seeing me crusty. I'm sorry. I'm coming on the screen cuss crusty. I don't care. That's how I wake up. I woke up like this. Like it is what it is. But let me just hold it a little bit further back so you're not all up in my grill. Um, and uh, what was I even saying? Yeah, so I really tried to, I did a pretty good job of filming a lot of sponsored content before I left and communicating with brands like, hey, I'm leaving. I'm not going to be able to. My days are going to be busy. The internet is going to be shoddy. So I don't think I'm going to be able to upload and send whatever, whatever. And so if a brand like got back to me after the fact, I'm just like, sorry, I didn't bring the products. Like I did not. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Like a girl's got to take vacation. That's the one thing I will say about content creation. Vacations are very hard to come by. Um, even if you have a team, all those things, like if something is due, like, and brands are like not flexible or something like that, which I don't understand the reason to not be flexible. Because again, I say last time I checked, I'm not a doctor. So nothing I'm doing is life or death. The products that you're trying to sell are going to be on the shelves. Like, let's really think big picture, but you know, I'm saying that privilege and da, 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 I understand I'm not blowing off what I do, but I'm just saying like, if someone's taking a vacation, like let them take a vacation because you as a brand are only seeing like what that person is working on. And it's like, I'm constantly working on someone's campaign somehow. And it's really hard to, to effectively plan out like, no, I want this two block chunk where I'm free. Because like, sometimes these are long-term campaigns where you've signed in March and now you're in September and they're like, this is the timeline. And I'm like, I need a break. I need a break. I need a break. So I, all of that is to say, is I've been very uh, unapologetic about the fact that I'm taking a break and that uh, about the fact that like, it'll get done when I get back because I'm not doing it on vacation. And I don't think I should have to, because like everybody takes vacations yet. Like, you know, when it comes to content creators and influencers and stuff. And obviously I say this again, knowing the privilege because to have so much work is a blessing and to have so many opportunities is a blessing. But still, I'm just like, I need a break. And like, if I'm asking you for a break, if I'm telling you that I need an extension, if I'm telling you that like I can't do it, like it's because I really need it because I don't often ask for breaks. I don't often ask for extensions. I don't often like tell people I need more time or that I need rest. So like I'm really glad that I'm getting that rest. But this brand in particular, they didn't approve my concept before I left. There was a little bit of a delay in approving my concept. So I obviously am not going to film without concept approval because that could have been a waste of my time, effort, and energy. But yeah, I have had to had I've been had to film that, but I really wish I told them like if I don't film this before I leave, it's not gonna get done until I get back. But I'm gonna film it because this is probably the nicest bathroom that I have had and will have this whole trip. I might be a little bit backlit, but that's fine. I think it's beautiful and it's a facial cleanser. So it'll be fine because I need to wash my face anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna get ready. Last morning at Unduli Ridge, um, and then we head to Ungava, which is like basically at Atosha. So we're heading into the the last leg. I would call this the middle of the trip. Like I think from Swakopund to here, those four nights was probably the middle of the trip. And now we're and we're heading into the the latter end of the trip. So welcome to the end of my time in Namibia. I just got to my next lodge and look what I see upon arrival. <laughs> right there, right in front of us, but we're fenced in and it's actually an electric fence, so not gonna get too close. But yeah, oh my gosh, elephant right there. You guys. Who needs TV when this is your view? Who? Who needs TV? Who needs TV when this is your view? Tell me. Tell me. TV who? TV where? TV, why? Hi, big buddy. Oh my gosh. All right, friends, real quick, real quick room tour. I would say that this is probably the most spacious room that I've had on this entire trip. So that's cool. Um, oh, the elephant is off the cam. But first thing I wanted to show you is that they do have 24 seven coverage of the watering hole to see what animals pop up. The elephant just left the um, screen. But there was that. Um, so you walk in, 
desk area, little couch area with a little reading light. So that's cool. Obviously you have a really huge patio that also has a view of the watering hole. Um, there the elephant goes, walking off into the distance right there. Oh no, actually right here. Oh, so it's really far away, but it looks closer to me. Oh, bye elephant, bye. Um, these fences right here are not electrical fences. So if any animals came this close, yeah, it would be a hello. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, this is the bed right here. So we got mosquito net by the bed and all that type of stuff. I'll walk around the other way. This is this room is huge. The air conditioning is pretty good too. And by pretty good, I mean it's standard air conditioning, so it's good. Um, then you have the little pathway behind the bed, which is the like mini bar, coffee bar, closet area. And then the bathroom, which is also pretty spacious. There's a vanity area. There are two sinks, the indoor shower, towels, toilet. We don't need to go in there. And then an outdoor shower. So yeah, very, very huge, spacious room. Um, so this is dope. Like, I still think I like the look and the vibe of Unduly more which was the previous lodge that I was just at. However, I think this place is gonna be a lot cooler in terms of like what I see because they are literally like in the middle of the national park. So, oh, I'm even seeing elephant poop right here, um, which means that this is a place, yeah, that means either this elephant, that doesn't look too fresh, but it means that these elephants just be coming around this way. Yeah, so. Excited, that's the end of the room tour. Hello beautiful people. I just got back from lunch and I have like an hour and a half before I need to be at the reception area for today's afternoon game drive or drive or whatever. Um, also happy World Rhino Day, because it is World Rhino Day. Um, I feel like I need to wash my face like every 0.5 seconds. I don't know if you've noticed how my skin has like been irritated this trip just the breakouts breakout 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 like so that's one thing one reason that I'm excited to get back home and get back to weather that does a little bit more for my skin normally when I'm in Africa and yes I mean Africa because the trips that I've taken to different African countries um my skin has fared really really well um but this is the first time I'm in like desert and so I'm learning that my skin loves the humidity that I've experienced in African countries, but it does not like the desert. Um, so that's good to know. I'm walking around because I'm trying to see if this lodge provides slippers, but it doesn't look like they do. I only see robes, but that's not a problem because I always travel with some slippers of my own because I don't like to have my feet on the bare ground, you know? Um, so I have slippers that I took from my hotel in Joburg. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna pop those on if I can find them. Okay, I found them. Um, wanted to just do a quick little check-in, a little feelings check. I'm doing it. What, why are you yelling? Um, doing it because um, even if I don't post this, like I may not even post this. I know my therapist is going, is going to ask me how I felt during my trip because we've been checking in on feeling. So I figured why not share with you too? I don't think I'm going to share the full version because you know, it's some things we leave for, for the therapist. There's some things that we leave to therapy, but now I feel like I'm posted up on this little therapy chair <laughs> so we can talk. Um, I feel like yesterday or the lodge that we left today, I feel like Unduli Ridge was my favorite and that was like actually really sad to leave for some reason. The people were really warm and nice. They did a really good job of building community. So it wasn't just like the lodge staff that was really nice. It was like the people that I met that were also staying there. It was just so nice to like connect with people. Um, there was a couple that was 
from the UK, like from London, but like an Indian couple. And they were a lot like older, not a lot older, I'm guessing it, but like most of the people that were at this lodge were older couples because it seems like, you know, this is the type of thing that they can do now that they're more settled, more established, maybe they're empty nesters, like that type of thing. And excuse me, I just really loved this couple. They were so inspirational in in how like in like viewing like relationship i would cat and then there was another couple that actually had just gotten married um in sandwich harbor like a couple of days before they came to unduly ridge and it was just like really inspirational to see how couples interact um one being newlyweds the other being like married presumably for a lot longer um and just like seeing what to like even potentially aspire to like very like little things um that i caught that i was like yeah like i do want to experience that like i do think that that's important so like for example the little things the first night that we were on an afternoon like scenic drive i was on an afternoon scenic drive with like the older couple from the uk and like at some point we like drove by a branch and she was on the side where the branch could have potentially like hit her a little bit and like he immediately like grabbed her and like pulled her like not it wasn't like a hard pull but it was very and she was like what and then he was like you know but he was doing it because he had seen that she was almost about to get hit and like the way his instinct kicked in and was like you know hey move over come here i was just like that's like protector that's very that's like being alert that's like you know, just, I don't know. It was just like, that's like care. Um, the following day I went on a game drive with that same couple plus the newlywed couple. Um, and it was also just very nice to see like how he was constantly checking on her, you know, like, do you need water? Are you cold? Da, 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 da. Like a whole bunch of those things. And at some point she was very thirsty while we were like, we had just finished like an hour long hike to see those, um, painting those engravings and our tour guide was like all right like they're gonna do a little performance for you and he was like i have to go back to the car to get her water my wife is thirsty and the guy was like no no no, don't worry i'll get it and he was like okay but it needs to happen right now because my wife is thirsty like basically like very much so being like if you're not gonna go get this water right now i need to go get it because my wife is seriously like she needs water and that was all just seeing the way he like advocated for her and spoke up for her and was like, this is what needs to happen. And if, if you're not going to make it happen, it's my responsibility to make it happen. And I thought that that was very like admirable um, as well. Um, so, yeah. And then and then when we were doing the hike thing, this could have been an opportunity for me to feel like bad, but I didn't feel bad because I was like, I'm fine. But like the the hike to get to the rocks, this little there's this huge, I don't know what they're called. I need to ask them, but they're these like huge bugs that like are apparently are spider predators. Um, and they make a huge sound when they fly. They're almost like dragonflies. Like, and so they, their, their sound is very menacing to me. So I just saw one fly um, up into my window. And yeah, it was just scary because they're huge but when the guy told me that they're like hunting for spiders i was like well i guess i can i guess i like you then like i guess i guess you have a purpose but at any rate yeah um when we were hiking across the rocks or whatever like it was a a scary little hike well not scary but it was like a little like you know a little treacherous because it was just a bunch of rocks piled on each other there wasn't really a clear path in some places and like both women had like men to like help them and to like to be to hold on to and da, da 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 and i'm sure if i fell like one of the guys would have like been there and assisted but like their responsibility their primary responsibility was obviously like to be with their wives to be with the people um with the women that they had like come with um so i don't know it was just that that, that i'm just like feeling very like oh like i have something to look forward to but i also like just watching couples interact watching newlyweds watching um seasoned couples like interact is a really good way to remind yourself of like oh this is what i should have like this is what i should experience in the context of like seeing that and experiencing that it like on this trip really really pushed me to like finally 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 stop interacting with someone who i should have stopped interacting with a long time ago if you watched my previous vlogs it was the person that i was like 
yeah, like this person ended things. I've been seeing someone for two months, like da 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 da. I um, tried to do the no contact thing for a little bit, but I tried to do no contact without blocking. Like that was like my thing. And I just like, I couldn't do it. It was, it was just very, very hard. And I tried to tell myself like, oh yeah, I'm okay with like being friends. Like I'm okay with, you know, you know, like whatever, like, oh, it seems like we can have a good like friendship or whatever. But deep, 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 deep down, I knew that there was part of me that was like, waiting for this person to get their life together or something and it was a very small small thing on this trip that made me finally decide to abruptly cut ties um and it was just like the thing that happened was just me realizing that they just don't care it's just very toxic it's just very toxic patterns going on and i'm just like enough enough is enough um, so I'm thankful for this trip and just like opening my eyes in that way. I'm thankful for like having a really close example of other couples and how they're interacting and how I want someone to interact with me and how I want someone to care and look out for me. Um, yeah, so I'm coming back and I, I'm never, I'm not talking to that person again. And I really mean that. Like, yeah, this is the last, the last three days of the trip we have today tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and then the day after that i'm off to the airport when the journey begins so let's enjoy it let's enjoy it yeah happy sunday happy sunday folks i'm just taking a little a little bath right now this is their territory. Yeah, I might try and go to the um, little underground tunnel, BRB. I thought I was gonna relax for a little bit, but there are two elephants that are present and I really wanna see them up close. So I was like, let me get up out my room and go and see them. And I think they're like bathing right now. I think they're washing their bodies. I actually might go into the underground. They're like really washing themselves. Oh my gosh. It's like really bathing right now. Oh, there are mad bugs over this water. <gasps> Freak of nature. Apologies that my vlog just became a Nat Geo episode. That was the coolest thing. That third elephant is just there chilling, but this is literally the coolest thing. Like who needs TV when this is your view? Love it here.
So the differences between black and white rhino is not the color. They both have got the same color though. Mm -hmm. If you look very carefully, uh, white rhino has got three humps. Mm -hmm. Black rhino has got two humps. Okay. But black rhino is, is more skittish than white rhino. White rhino is more relaxed. Okay. Happy World Rhino Day. It's a rhino day that right there. This is good television. This is good television. You guys, at this rate, I'm about to be on a safari like every single year. This is the coolest thing ever. I'm sitting down for dinner. I know I look a mess because I like sprinted to get that footage of the lion and the rhino. Um, but the lion is just here having something to drink. Good evening. No, you're fine. You're fine. Oh, it's okay, facing so, me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look what showed up. Happy New Day, beautiful people. Happy New Day. Day. Happy New Day. Hello, beautiful people. Um, I'm currently in Atosha National Park. We are riding through the park just searching for things to see, just on a game drive, I guess. <clears throat> um, but it was an eventful morning. This morning, I woke up to lions roaring. Apparently, they were roaring all night, and I think I did hear some of them in the middle of the night, but I, again, thought they were elephants. I'm just always so thrown off by, like, always. I'm saying this as if I've heard lions roar before this trip. I've been so thrown off by, like, the sound of lions because it's just so fascinating to me. Um, so yeah, the lions were right next to my room this morning when I woke up and was getting ready and they were roaring away. And I was like, soon enough, they're gonna be at the watering hole. Um, and they were, and that was the footage that I showed from earlier this morning of the lions running around. Um, so the pressure to see lions is off because I saw lions last night, I saw lions this morning. The lions, they're, they're around, they, they're around, they're around, so. Really, the one last thing that I want to see is technically like a leopard. I've seen lions, rhinos, giraffes, elephants, zebras. Like, I've seen it all. And they're all so beautiful and all so cool. The one thing I haven't seen is a leopard. If we don't see one on today's drive, we might have a little bit more luck tomorrow. Um, because I'm going to Okunjima, which is like home of the Africat Foundation. So, yeah. friends i am back from this morning's game drive we were out from basically 7 to 12 it was cool but honestly i feel like being at camp is a lot cooler what i mean by this is we went out we saw elephants i saw elephants up close and personal on the camp 
Um, we went out, we didn't see lions. That was fine because I literally saw lions last night and saw them first thing this morning and probably will see them again tonight. Um, we saw giraffes, but only from far away, which again was fine because I saw giraffes when I was at um, Unduli Ridge a couple of nights ago. Oftentimes, the animals that I saw were really far off in the distance and it was cool, but like, you know. And then like I saw a lot of ostriches, which like, again, are cool, but like, I wanted to see a leopard or a cheetah, which I haven't seen before. I think you can see it in my eyes. Like my eyes are like, this is the first day all trip that I like put on a face of makeup and like I actually had time to do that. I liked my outfit today, it was super cute. It was this Zara dress. Um, Another unfortunate update that I want to give you. I feel like at this point, like we're getting real close here. So I figure I would just tell you this. Um. Remember how I was telling you about how I officially like blocked somebody and was like officially done because like I was officially done. Well, I last night was updating one of my friends on the situation because I hadn't actually been completely forthcoming with a lot of my friends about the fact that I was still interacting with said person on a just like friendly level. Um, and so I finally, because I was like, okay, well now I'm actually finally done. So like, I can come clean and be like, haha guys, like jokes on me, but now I'm actually done. And let me retell you everything that happened from where I last left off. Um, and I actually wasn't interested in fully divulging everything that had happened. Um, but like, not that I wasn't interested, I wasn't going to offer it, but she had asked, like, I basically, <laughs> let me backtrack a bit. Cause now we're about to be chatting. Oh, there's a giraffe. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see, because it's really, really, this camera doesn't have the best zoom capabilities, but right here. I promise you it looks way closer in real life than it does on this camera. And I resent the fact that this camera doesn't really fare well with zoom capabilities, but I guess it's a vlog camera, but yay, giraffe outside my window. Hey girl, how's it going? That's pretty much it. Again, it's another day. I don't know if we're gonna check in again tonight. Like, oh, oh I'm going on a night drive. I'm going on a night game drive. That's what I have left today. It's only gonna be an hour, which I'm fine with. Cause like being out at night, I'm like, ooh, like spooky. Um, and honestly, being out at night, I feel like it's more eventful to stay by the water hole than it is to go and try and find animals out at night. So yeah, I maybe might show you some footage from that, but like, I don't have night vision. So chances are I may not actually be able to see much. So if so, we'll check in tomorrow when I'm at Okunjima, um, the Africat Foundation. So we'll check in. One thing this trip has given me is, and I never thought I would say this, but an appreciation for colder weather because as I stand here, I have basically used up all of the room insecticide on a bunch of bugs that are in my room that I know I shouldn't have really used it for, for goodness sakes, that I know I shouldn't have really used it for because like, I don't think they're the type of bugs that bite but they're somehow getting into this freaking room. My goodness, I kill some and more emerge. And I just think they're sliding in somehow, some way, and it's freaking me out. It's making my skin crawl. Oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know if you can see up there. Okay, you can clearly see that because they're by the light, right? Um. Yeah, this wasn't a thing last night and I've already killed, there's so many that are on the floor, but then I don't know if you can see, uh, you probably can't and I don't feel like getting closer. So I'm going to try and zoom in on the window. Great. That's a better view. They are all up on the window, like all up on it. And I'm sure they're here because it's light and the light is attracting them. But like now I don't want to turn off the light because I want them to stay away from me. And if I turn off the light, are they gonna come towards me? Anyways, this is just, ooh, this is a rough close up. This has just given me a great appreciation for living in the climates that these bugs don't exist 24 seven. Um, 
because I'm pretty sure this is a warm weather type thing. Good morning. I did not sleep well at all. I woke up at like 3 a.m. and I just felt like there was stuff crawling on me. And there was. Um, I killed multiple of those little moth flies things in the middle of the night. I don't know what, I don't know what was going on. I even feel stuff crawling on me right now. Um, I don't know what was going on last night because it wasn't that way the first night that I was here. I actually slept pretty fine the first night I was here, except for the fact that I had minimal sleep because I had to be up early because we were leaving camp by 7 a.m. But yeah, at 6.30, I tried to go back to sleep so badly, but it just wasn't happening. I was just, I had to turn on white noise to go to sleep because I didn't want to hear any like bzz, bzz, like things flying around. Um, and then I just turned on, what the heck? Why is my thing doing this? The lights and just spotted like some moth thingies in my bed. I don't know, they must have snuck in somehow or I don't know, I don't know what happened because I have a mosquito net and like a blackout curtain around my bed. And then I came out and saw a bunch of them like on the floor around my bed. So yeah, last night was rough. Um, I cannot, cannot emphasize enough I was just shaking. I just feel, I feel, I can't, I'm going to hop in the shower right now uh, because I just feel gross um, and I cannot emphasize enough. Like I'm, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> Friends, we have made it to the last lodge and the last room tour this afternoon, later this afternoon. The final activity of this entire trip is leopard trekking or leopard tracking. I can't tell if it's trekking or tracking, um, but I know we will be tracking the leopards. Um, so I'm excited, fingers crossed, because that is like the last thing that I want to see. Um, and hopefully it happens and then I get to go home. So yeah, but I'm gonna do really quickly do a room tour, final room tour, nothing major here, but like it gets the job done for one night. The outside of the room or of the mini lodge, you walk up this ramp and there's a nice little front porch patio. I actually really like the color of this lodge. This orange, burnt sienna orange color is actually really nice. There is a key that's really, really old school, but I've already unlocked it. So yeah, and then you come in um, and it's just really simple, really quaint. It's definitely giving Frost Valley camp vibes. If you're from New York, you know. Um, but it basically feels like sleepaway camp. So we have the room. My room has two double beds. I only need one, so there's that. Um, no mosquito net or anything like that, but I've noticed that this place doesn't really have um, many bugs, so that's cool. Um, towels, extra blankets, if you wanted to do laundry service. Um, little table area here to sit and I don't know, I guess look at that. <laughs> There's not much out the window. But there are also curtains all around. I haven't stepped into the bathroom yet, so this is also my first time walking into the bathroom. Um, you have a toilet. Again, gets the job done. That's a spacious room for a toilet, I'm not gonna lie. The sink area is actually kind of nice. The bathroom is actually kind of nice. Um, I love when people put effort into making a bathroom nice. And then there's also a vanity right here. That's pretty much it. That is it for the final lodge of this trip.
beautiful people. As you can see, I am ready for bed. Um, I'm probably not gonna go to bed right away. The time right now is, let's check the time. 9.38, so a little bit early, not too early, because honestly, I'm probably gonna be up at six tomorrow morning, maybe even 5.45, just to make sure everything is situated since I have to just, since I have to pack. I'm already actually all packed up right now because the I have out, what I plan on wearing tomorrow, I've packed my carry-on, sorted things out, and then the only things that I have out are my technology, which is all going in my carry-on and my backpack anyways. I cannot, for so many different reasons, but I cannot explain to you how beautiful this trip has been and how just like in awe of like one, like God's creation, right? So it's like the animals and the nature and the landscapes and the whatever. Um, but I'm also just like in awe that this is my life and that like I can do stuff like this. It's really, really strange to think about the fact that like I'm the same person that I was when I was the 17 year old, 18 year old that had a whole bunch of classmates and people around her who were doing this like it was nothing. And I so desperately longed to be able to do stuff like this. And like, it's so crazy to me that I'm still the same person. Obviously like I'm different, but it's like, it's still me. Like when I look in the mirror, I'm like, whoa, like, it's literally still you and you are doing exactly what you said, what you swore, what you promised yourself that you would do. Um, so it's just like all of this is very overwhelming. All of it is very emotional, like for me in that way, because I'm just like, whoa, like how did life, how did we get here in life? Like, how did this happen? Um, I'm just really grateful to God. I, I'm not going to cry on camera again. I literally am over it, but I probably We'll just like cry and because I'm so grateful. I'm really so grateful and I can't express that. I feel like I'm coming back a lot lighter. I know I have a lot of work. <laughs> um, I'm actually probably gonna get started on work like after I like say bye to you guys for the night. But I am just like, what in the world is the life that I'm living? Good morning. Um, first of all, I actually slept really well. Like, this was like the first good sleep that I've had in a minute. Ugh, I just love the freshly brushed out heatless curl look. I really do. Like, I just feel like I look like somebody. I thought about putting a headband on, but I think I'm gonna keep it as is. Yeah, one last meal with Leslie before we drive about three hours to the airport. My flight is at 1.30 or 145 or 135 and then I'm off. This is it, I guess this is it. We're going home, baby. We're going home, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching. <laughs> but yeah, let's go home. Let's, let's go home. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I cannot emphasize enough how fun this was to vlog. I don't think I've ever vlogged in this way, so this was fun. I love talking to you guys. I love, I just love, I just love. <laughs> that too, I just love. Um, so yeah, can't wait to check in with you guys later. Um, I haven't mentioned it this whole entire time, but like, why not subscribe to my channel? Because like, that'll be a cool thing. Like, because like, because things are fun around here, but appreciate you. Love you guys so much. Talk when I'm home. Bye.